Let's go ahead and work on the Dell Inspiron laptop that came in here for no power. I do not know which model laptop this is, but it's one of those laptops that flip all the way back 360 degrees. It doesn't power on. No power, uh, totally dead. I already took the back cover out and we're gonna inspect the board to see if I see anything unusual. The first thing I wanna do is test the charger that came with this laptop. And I have it plugged in right over here. The charger is giving out 19 volts, which is very good. I'm gonna plug the charger in the charging port. Then just monitor to see if there's any signs of life. Try to power it on. Nothing at all. No light, no screen, no backlight. Laptop is totally dead. So the charger is plugged in right over here. See, where's the red on the charger? The red lines, black is here, so the red lines are right over here. Yeah, so we can test from this point here. Voltage is reaching up to that point, which is good. We have two MOSFETs here. We have two here. Just doing a quick inspection on the board. Let's stick to this area here. Zeros everywhere. I mean, I do not have a circuit diagram for this board, and I'm just randomly checking. Now, I do not see anything obvious that stands out. All I'm doing is testing for a short. And right now, I'm not seeing a short anywhere on the board. Just random testing. The next thing I wanna do is go under the thermal cam just to monitor the heat properties of the board to see if there's anything unusual. So let's inspect the board under the thermal cam. Let me focus the camera. All I wanna do is plug the charger in and just monitor the board to see if there's anything getting hot. So a charger is plugged in. We do see some heat being generated on the board. Oh, what's this? That could be our problem right there because it's very abnormal for a spot to come on if the board is not turning on. The CPU is cold, dead cold. And the board is not on. Something is blinking over there. Let me go to manual mode. and then raise the temperature. We have this component here and this component here. Let's take a look under the microscope to see what those components are. Right there, so it's this and this. These are the two components that are getting hot. Let's randomly test this capacitor here. And it's shorted to ground. This capacitor is shorted to ground. So the thermal cam did point out where that short is. It pointed out to this component and this component. And randomly testing capacitors in this area, we find out that 
these two calves are shorted to ground. What about this one? These two are okay. This is okay. This one is shorted to ground. Uh, these two are shorted to ground as well. Okay, so this side is okay. So it's these two, these two, and this are shorted to ground. Just a moment. How are you? All right, all right. I What's have going this on? drive. I think my son, he bring it to you. So I need to take the information. Yeah. Important is the picture. So we have a short here, and the short could be caused by three things. It could be a shorted cap that is causing other caps to go short. It could be this year that's causing the short or it could be this chip that's causing the short i do not know what this chip is we can try to read the numbers and look it up it's probably some type of voltage regulator or switching power supply regulator dc to dc i see i don't know let me look this up quick and see if i can find any information about this chip like i said i do not have any circuit diagrams for this laptop and we do not know what this does but let's look up the chip Three nine five five. No, that's not it. Let me try instead of B, let me put eight. Okay, so I'm not finding any information about this chip. I do not know what this IC does. What about the other one? CJ. It's a power controller. Okay, so at least we know what one of them is. We do not know where the short is coming from right now. So we know this six pin IC is a power controller. I have no idea what the other one does. So could it be that this one is causing the short? One way to find out, let's remove it off the board and see if we still have a short. Uh, right now, I do not want to use hot air. I did not take the board off the laptop and I did not want to take it off. So we're going to use the soldering iron and maybe some low melt solder to take that chip out. If we use hot air, we may burn the keyboard under the board and we have to have the screen pointing down so it doesn't get burned. I do not want to take that risk right now and I do not want to disassemble the board. So let's use low melt solder to remove the chip. Since this is a, a power controller, it could be that this power controller is what's causing the short, very likely. So let's see, do we still have a short? And look at that, the short is gone. The short is gone. So we had a short where? We had a short here. That's our problem. This chip is our problem. Now we have to order another one. I don't think I can get this chip from any of the salvaged boards that we have here. I do not know if I have anything similar. Okay. Computer turns on? It turns on, okay. but it doesn't like boot. You watch yeah. them? Yeah. yeah, we did a lot of them on <laughs> no. YouTube. Okay, buddy. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi. 
It's ready. ready. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Let me solder the chip back so we do not lose the orientation. Right, so that's it. The power controller chip is what's causing the problem. Removing the power controller chip releases the short. Laptop will not turn on, of course, because we have to have that chip back in. We're going to tell the customer that we need to order the chip. I may continue this in video too when we get the chip in, so I can show you that the laptop is working after we change the chip, considering there's nothing else wrong with the laptop. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.